In this session, we're going to take a quick look at rates of change, amounts of change, and compounded rates of change. Understanding change is important to planning and decision making. Um, it's very possible to misinterpret the dynamics of change over time to either oversimplify or overproject your change if you're not making uh, your projections based on the right percentage or assumption of growth. We're going to demonstrate this using Dallas County's population change over the last decade or so. Dallas County is the fastest growing county in Iowa, and it's, it's uh, just to the west of the Des Moines metropolitan area. For quite a while now, it has led the state in population growth. So we're going to use this to demonstrate our, our change indicators. Well, the first number we might want to calculate, of course, is just the simple annual change amount, which is going to be the current number minus the year previous. And we see that Dallas County grew by 1,758 persons between 2000 and 2001. And I can copy this all the way down. And, and we can look at this and find out that it grew by as much as 3,269 persons between 2004 and 2003, and as few as 1,756 persons between 2002 and 2001. So this gives us a sense of how many people we were annually adding to the county. We can also calculate the annual percentage change, the percentage rate of growth between 2001 and 2000, and we do that by calculating the new number, population number, to, in 2001, divided by the 2000 number, minus 1, and that will give us our percentage change. So the population grew by 4.2% between 2000 and 2001, and I can copy that percentage down just by double-clicking in the lower right-hand corner of this formula. So the rate of change ranged from 3.4% in 2010 to as high as 6.9% in 2004. Total change over this period is much different, and, and in general, it might be much more interesting to get a handle on the gross amount of change, and that's simply the last number divided by the first number, or excuse me, minus the first number. And so this county grew by 27,998 persons over this time period. The total percentage change over this 11 years of change, we have 11 years of change up above, so there's 11 periods. The total percentage change over this 11-year period is going to be just like we calculated above on the annual percentage changes, only now we're looking at the, at the end points. We're looking at the newest number divided by the oldest number, minus 1. And the county grew by 67.6%. .6%. Dallas County, Iowa grew by more than two-thirds over this 11-year period. Well, the average numerical change, then, is going to be the average annual number of the gross change up above. So that number is this. It's going to be this number divided by a number of periods of change that we had. That was 11. And it was 2,545. We can also calculate the average rate of change over this very same time period. It was 67.6%. .6%, so we can take that number, we'll do that right here, and divide it by 11. And the average rate of change, the average annual rate of change, was 6.1%. It is often the case that people will take this 6.1% average rate of change and apply it to the last year to project future populations. And I'm going to show in a little bit why that's inappropriate and incorrect. What we really want to do is to calculate the compounded average rate of change. Compounded average rate of change is the same principle as compounded interest on a on a checking, I mean on a savings account. And what we want to do here is have a rate of change that takes us from our original number here through our last known number here 
that represents a rate of change that goes from those two points smoothly. That won't be the case if you use your 6.1% annual rate of change, and I'll show that in just a minute. So first we have to calculate our compounded average rate of change. The formula is right here. It's a little bit more complicated, but it's our new number divided by our old number, the first year's worth of data, to the 1 over 11th power. The 1 over the 11th power is the number of periods of change, and it's the and this is going to give us our compounded rate. And then we, we uh, take minus 1 to get our percentage change. So let's do that here right now. We're going to take our old number divided by our first number. I'm going to close this parentheses. Now you have to use this symbol to do an exponent, and it's always good to put your, your terms in a parenth in, in brackets, minus 1. And the compounded rate of change that we're dealing with is 4.8%. Now this is a much different number than 6.1%, and it represents the magnitude of error that people often make when they're making projections simply relying on the average rate of change. And we'll show that in just a second. We're going to use the three numbers that we calculated above to make a projection. The first projection is going to be based on the average amount of growth per year. That was this number right here, 2,545. The second projection is going to be made on the average rate of change at 6.1%. And the last projection is going to be made on the compounded rate of change, which was 4.8%. So we're going to go down here now, and we're going to simply project the future population of projection 1 using our last known population point, 2011, and we're always going to be adding 2,545 persons. I'm just going to lock that cell with an F4. And that means that our population is going to grow by that fixed amount through the rest of the projection period. In this case, I'm projecting out to 2020. In the next projection, we're going to grow from our last known point based on the average rate of change of 6.1%. So we're going to take this number plus, again, our previous number times, what was it, 6.1%. We'll lock that with an F4. And we're going to copy that down. Whoops, I made a mistake. What's wrong? Oh, it needs to be plus. There we go, plus. And we'll, we'll copy that formula down. And it projects a much different number. Here, we both had the same origin, but using the average rate of change versus the average amount of change, we get a tremendous difference in expected population growth by 2020. Now let's look at what happens when we use the, the compounded rate of change as our, our, our basis for growth. going to take the, the last known number times the compounded rate of change plus the last known number and we'll add that all the way down to the end. Whoops, I didn't lock the cell. Let's do that right here. Sorry. And here we go. And we can see that we get a different final number. It's 105,933, much less than using the rate of change, the average rate of change, and significantly more, though, than just using the fixed amount of change every year of 2,545. If we graphed these numbers, this is what the three projections might look like um, had they been done using the three numbers that we, we use. The average amount of growth, that tracks along the historical pattern. You can see that it looks like it very well may be the best description of what this county is going to do into the future. 
Projection 2, though, using the average rate of change from the last known point, makes for a very robust projection in growth, much higher than the third projection, which is the compounded rate of change. Well, we've already demonstrated that projection 2 is not appropriate. It over-describes the change too much. It, it is, it, what, as applied, you're actually using, many people use this 6% rate of change and treat it as if it's a compounded rate of change as opposed to an average rate of change. And so they misapply it and it ends up being much too robust. The, per, the compounded rate of change takes into account how this population changed over this period of time and anticipates what it might do in the near future given that compounded average rate of change that was realized over this time period. Planners generally will use these two numbers, oftentimes averaging the distance, to arrive at a final estimated rate of change for their population down uh, let's say five, even ten years down the road.